Hello, BookTube. We're going to try a change of pace from yesterday. <laughs> We're going to have no political rantings of any kind. We're not going to have a stack of books. We're just going to have two. And we've got a different computer, a different attitude. It's a whole new day. <laughs> so, we're going to go through these two packages purely in bookish terms. Okay? One is very thin and one is very thick. So we'll start with this. We'll start with the very thin one. Let's see what that is. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, this is due in October. I did not request it. It's a cute little thing, though. Uh, it's uh, by Rupert Christensen, and it's the City of Light, the Making of Modern Paris. <laughs> just a, a tiny little uh, thing, probably about Belle Epoque Paris and, and the, the dawn of, you know, the death of the Second Empire and the beginning of the modern era. Not, in other words, terrifically original, but it'll all depend on uh, how Rupert Christensen does it. Who is he when he's at home? Uh, he's been writing for the, uh, the arts for the Daily Telegraph since 1996. It'd be nice if he could help a brother out. <laughs> I have not published in the UK. Uh... His many books include Prima Donna, Paris, Babylon, and Romantic Affinities. Okay, so he's he's written about France before. So uh, this is a sparkling account of 19th century reinvention of Paris as the most beautiful, exciting city in the world. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Parisians love to say that sort of thing about Paris, that it's the most beautiful and exciting, alluring city uh, in the world. And uh, I can only assume... When, when Parisians especially, but also uh, Paris fanatics who aren't Parisians say that, uh, that it means they've never been to South America. They've <laughs> never been to any city in South America. I'll just let, let it go at that. And then we've got this big one, which I suspect is more than one book. I, I don't think there's a book this big that could be coming out that I wouldn't know about. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's two books. Uh, so the first one, I've requested both of these, and I'm happy to get them. The first one is by James Barr, and it's called Lords of the Desert. It's all about the uh, British uh, escapades in the Middle East. Uh, let's see, James Barr, in this book, James Barr is the first historian uh, to fully explore one of the most important yet least understood stories of the 20th century, of how, in the course of a single generation, America replaced Great Britain as the dominant power in the Middle East. Britain, by any standard, was in an enviable position when the Second World War broke out. It controlled Aden, Cyprus, Egypt, and the Sudan, Palestine, Jordan, Iraq. At the beginning of 1941, it jointly ran Iran with the Soviet Union. Only Saudi Arabia was outside British dominion, and it was there that the United States made its move, when two American oil companies, Standard Oil and Texaco, outbid the British to win exclusive drilling rights in Saudi Arabia. Uh, and that, that's... A pivotal moment in modern history, so that, and that's that's great. This will be so. James Barr is a visiting fellow at King's College London and the author of *Line in the Sand* and *Setting the Desert on Fire*. So again, uh, a historian who has read and written about this subject before. That's that's great. That can make all the difference. Uh, oh, okay, great. Oh, fantastic. All right, this comes out in early September. Uh, it's a biography of Adam Smith <laughs> by Jesse Norman. That's him right there, if you can make it out in the sea of green on the cover. <laughs> the, uh, the sketch on the cover was... Uh... <laughs> you, you would, I swear you would think from all the phone calls I get during these videos that I am popular. I swear I am not. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, I could, I could fall on my head in the bathroom, and when you woke me up, I would still be able to come up with a more attractive cover than this, but even so, it's the subject that matters, and Adam Smith is perennially fascinating. Uh, one of the great philosophers of the modern age, acclaimed as the father of economics, he influenced heads of state from Napoleon to Ronald Reagan, and thinkers as diverse as Karl Marx and Milton Friedman, and is regarded as the emblem of today's free market neoliberal capitalism. His book, The Wealth of Nations, and its idea of free trade and the invisible hand have become the gospel of economists and business people around the world. But who was Adam Smith? Father of economics, a prophet of modern capitalism, or a market socialist who inspired Karl Marx? A plagiarist of French and Scottish Enlightenment thinkers, or a true original? A didactic moralist, or a value-free neoliberal in embryo? Or something rather different and vastly more interesting? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm sold. Uh, and... Jesse Norman apparently is a, a member of Parliament uh, and is widely regarded as one of the rising stars in the British House of Commons. Uh, I could swear I've read a book 
by someone named Jesse Norman. Uh, he's educated at Oxford and holds a PhD in philosophy from University College London. Oh, and his okay, his previous books have included Edmund Burke, the First Conservative, which I believe I reviewed uh, uncharitably. <laughs> I shall check and see my my voluminous archives. But anyway, there you go. So that is a mail hall in under ten minutes with no political ranting whatsoever. We have a green new biography of Adam Smith. We have Lords of the Desert by James Barr about uh, the gigantic switch. I'm hoping that he portrays it accurately in this book as very intentional on the part of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. President Roosevelt knew exactly the price he wanted to extract from the British in exchange for American help in World War II. Uh, but I imagine, I and mean, this author knows the subject, so he probably does. Uh, and City of Light uh, by Rupert Christensen, a tiny little thing about uh, the making of modern Paris in both history and our imagination. So that's that's a fine little mail hall. There's no, there's no pesky made-up stories. Uh, it's just a bunch of nonfiction to occupy me in the autumn. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up for now. You notice no foam. No, uh, no squinted eyes, no polarizing opinions whatsoever. So we'll, I'll wrap this up, uh, but I've got plenty more to do. So we'll, I'll be back. Thank you, Book Two.